It's uh, four o'clock. Um, called to order the meeting of the Hanson Board of Health for Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. Uh, we'll go to roll call. Ali Diaz? Yeah. Kevin yeah. Perth? Kevin? Yes, sir. I'm here. And I'm here also, Dennis O'Connell. Um, Joe Amato. First order of business, we're going to uh, jump ahead to uh, Terrence McSweeney so he can make a, a doctor's appointment. He's going to present 141 Pennsylvania Ave. Go ahead, Terrence. Thank you. I appreciate that. So as I was saying, this is a standard Title V upgrade, pre-existing four-bedroom dwelling. Uh, didn't pass inspection. I didn't conduct the inspection, but I got involved after the fact. Um we need uh, a couple, so we're, a couple of variances are required for uh, for implementation of the plan as presented. Uh, one is a uh, reduction, a vertical uh, reduction in groundwater separation from four feet down to three feet, uh, and then the second one was the sieve analysis. Uh, we needed the sieve analysis because we had relatively well. We have a lot of fill material out there. The native materials were in the free flowing water, so we couldn't actually conduct a perk test. Um, we would like the uh, reduction in groundwater separation, the SAS to groundwater vertical uh, groundwater uh, separation reduction, because uh, if, if you'll grant the variance, it'll allow us to maintain a gravity system. Uh, the, the, pipe, the plumbing for the house basically runs across the entire front wall of the house, and if you're looking at the plan, you'll see it exits the left side of the house. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, is uh, core another hole in the front of the house and redirect the plumbing uh, from the left side of the house again, f from the street looking at the at the house, redirect that to the new uh, to the new house invert coming out the front uh, into a tank and a, and a, a series of uh, plastic uh, infiltrator chambers for the SAS. Um, if you'll grant the reduction, it'll allow us to maintain this system as a uh, gravity system. If not, we're going to have to change over to a pump system. Uh, the property is not located in a zone two, nor is it located in a zone A, so we're not in a particularly environmentally sensitive area. Um, we could have maintained the system out on the light, left side of the property uh, and and stayed 50 feet away from the wetlands, but we thought it was better to to get the additional setback to the to the wetlands. So by uh, recoring the the foundation and bringing the pipe out the front it will allow us to keep everything outside entirely outside the hundred foot setback to the wetlands. Uh, I ha I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. It's a fairly, as I said before, a fairly standard system tank distribution box, and I think it was 72 infiltrator chambers. It's a fairly large system. Yeah, 72 infiltrator uh, low pro. Uh, units. It's a fairly large system because the sieve analysis was a class two soil, so we had to use a 0 0.33 loading rate. Um, again, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have on the property or the or the proposal. Has uh, has conservation approved this, or do they need to approve this? Uh, I talked to Frank Scullinger maybe two weeks ago. Well, actually, they don't have to approve it because we're not in any of their jurisdictional areas. I did talk to Frank Scullinger a couple of weeks ago. He had a couple of technical questions on the on the products we were proposing to use. So I know that he's seen the plan. Uh, he didn't have any issues with it. Uh, no questions other than, as I say, the technical specifications on some of the components we're proposing to use. Uh, but because we're outside the 100-foot buffer zone, there is no... Oh, uh, okay, I, I'm design. sorry. I, th I thought you said you were in the buffer. Okay. Nope, nope, no, 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 no. If, um, yeah, if, if we went out the left side of the house, we would have been in the buffer, but by changing the, the invert gotcha. location to the front of the yep. house, we can keep everything outside the 100. Gotcha. Nope, it, uh, it looks like a good design to me, Terry. Did um, the review comments, did those get addressed, those couple of little items? Yeah, a couple of minor things, and yeah, yep. I, I did address those. I got the revisions back to Teresa, so you should be looking at the revised plan. Okay. Uh, there is a, revi the re a revised date of 628 on the plan, so as long as you're looking at that revision date, then you have... Uh, the most uh, recent, the most current plan, and that did incorporate the uh, the, re the uh, suggested or required revisions from from. Yeah, it says. Yep, it's re it's received June twenty eighth. So nope, I don't I don't have any further questions. Looks good to me. Good, thank you. I'll entertain a motion to accept Terry's plans. If uh, no, anyone else has any questions, if... no, I'll, I'll make, make a motion. motion. Go ahead, Eileen. Oh, I was going to say I'll make a motion to accept the plan for, I think it's 141 Pennsylvania Avenue. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I'll second that motion, Dennis. This is Kevin. And we'll go to roll call, Arlene. Yes. Kevin. 
Yes. I'm a yes also. Thank you, Terrence. Perfect. Thank you. And listen, thanks for bumping me up on the agenda as well. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, All right. Uh, we'll go back to... A um, minute? Yes. Uh, approved minutes of June 8th, 2021. If everyone's had a chance to read the minutes, I'll accept the motion. I'll make a motion we accept the minutes for June 8th, 2021. Second that motion, this is Kevin. And we'll go to roll call, Ali. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Uh, next up, we'll set a, a meeting date for next month. Um, if anyone has a preferred date. Uh, Teresa had mentioned uh, August 3rd because that following week, she'd be on vacation for the week. Me too. <laughs> there you go, huh? I'll be gone the week of the 8th, I believe. So that would be good, the 3rd, somewhere in there. 3rd, fine, and day. Okay, we'll set it for August 3rd then. That's three weeks. Three weeks, right? Three weeks. Uh, next up is the Betterment Loan Funds, and they're looking to uh, request additional funds. The Betterment I Loan Funds. Go ahead. Uh, how, do we, I was going to ask a question about I That appeared to me as whether or not we're requesting more funds. Is that the way yes. I'm yes. reading I, that? Yes, yes, I believe we are. Do we know, I'm assuming that we've used all the money that we had uh, probably a couple of years ago that we got for betterment loans. And are we, do we know where we're at right now yeah, and how the, much we can draw down? Uh, the, the money is exhausted right now. Okay. So it's, it's time to reborrow. All right. And what's the proposed amount we're going to reborrow? I believe it's in the two two range, is what it was, what was borrowed before. Two hundred thousand. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember, is there a certain time we have to do this by? Well, it is. I believe the funds are done, so uh, you know they can't approve anymore. The funds are what? The funds are done now. They can't approve anymore. We can't. Funds are no, but that, The funds are yes. for loans. That we can't give out any loans unless we borrow right. more money. Right. right, and that's. And my question was: so you you're saying that we probably need to borrow another two hundred thousand? Yes, that's the occurrence they borrowed by is the two hundred thousand. That's okay. what was last time. Um, I just I just want to real quick just uh, just ask. So could, could someone just give a little detail on how that works with the interest rate on the loan as to what, you know, what maybe we're paying and then what maybe the um, residents would be paying? Because I, I think just with the current rates of refinancing and stuff, I think people are going to end up, end up going that route, you know, refinancing or getting an equity line in their home rather than borrowing money from the program. In the past, uh, sometimes it's been difficult for people to do that, but you can explain the... Uh, program though well it is it's, it's been this i think we've had this program like uh probably 18 years and it constantly revolves and it, it basically the people that really can't uh, get a loan end up using this as paid back on their taxes uh i think in the, all the time we've had this there's only been one failure and the town has regrouped its payment on it what typical amount of thing? I don't have that with me right now here. So Kevin wanted you wanted the interest rate, right? Five percent. Well, Five. yeah, I was just he, I was just curious on yeah how much how much these people are being charged from interest on us to pay back the loan, and then what are we paying to borrow the money? And then I'm just wondering what those are compare. You know what I mean? I'm just wondering what those are comparison yes. to if I were to go get an equity line because uh, to me, I mean, the rates are so low, I just can't see anyone. If it's 5%, I can't see anyone really going that route. People that don't have the credit have to go that route. They have no other. And that's what it's been in the past. It's people that can't go out 
they don't have equity or whatever, they can't go and, and borrow. And I want to say two or three years ago, we might yeah. have increased the rate to make sure that it covered what we were paying. Okay. So I, I haven't, I haven't been, food. yeah, I haven't been around that long to really see, you know, how this has worked out in the past. But I mean, there hasn't been problems with, because my, my thought on it is just that if someone can't get a loan and their credit's bad, why should the town be lending them money? That's just my, you know, that's just my thought on it. Right. That if they're, right. if right. they're not they're paying back the bank, if they're not paying their bills, why should we be lending them money um, if they're in a position where they can't really afford it anyway? You know? It may not be that they can't afford it. It may be they don't have the credit that allows them to do it. Okay. But in the past, it's, we've only had a problem with, I think, one person. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't because that person couldn't pay it back. He just gave us a really hard time. And you're talking almost 20 years and to only have one person. Um, right. But mostly it's been people that either needed it real quick or didn't want to take out a home equity loan or didn't have the credit to be able to do that. Um, but they've okay. been able to pay it back. So. Okay. No, um, I mean, no, that, that sounds good. The only other concern I guess I would say is that, you know, if this money isn't used and say we get this money and we're paying interest on it to the state, I'm assuming it's going to cost us money. Um, you know, and then it sits there in, in an escrow account or whatever, and it's not used and we end up, you know, it costs us money. It, I agree. It's nice to have available and it's a nice program. Um, I, I'm just, again, I'm just really looking at, you know, the, the cost of it and um, if it makes sense to do or j yeah. if it makes Gene, sense to do right now, that's all. Yeah. Gene could provide the, the numbers for that, but I can tell you in the past, we've always had people on the waiting list waiting for those funds to become available. Yeah, okay. we do have a waiting and, uh, list. I don't right. think we're proposing the, the exact amount right now. It's just that uh, no. we want to be uh, able to borrow Ahead of it. the betterment fund. Okay. No, I mean, if, if, uh, if you guys, I mean, haven't experienced, you know, terrible, terrible experience with this in the past, like I said, I haven't been around long enough to to have dealt with it. Uh, but if you guys have had overall majority good experiences, then I, I don't, I don't see an issue. And if people are on a waiting list, then yeah, I, I Gil, don't see do why not. I guess. Do you currently have a waiting list? Uh, I believe there's two people so far. I think overall, I mean, I don't have the exact amount, but I think overall it was borrowed almost a half a million dollars overall. I think probably that's about right. Yeah. Over the years. But Gene, is, if you want the exact numbers, Gene has all of that. Um, she usually works with us on what it's costing, yeah. what it's costing to administer the program. Um, and it's, it's always been beneficial to people in town. And it, it seems like there's always been somebody on the waiting list waiting to borrow money. Um, so it must be time for us to do it again. So I guess we're not actually looking for the exact amount. It's just a, like a vote just to request the additional funds. Um, yes. So. But I, I understand Kevin's concern. The interest that we'd be paying on the, the amount borrowed, if we're not uh, giving it out, you know, in good, timely fashion, then we'd be sitting on it just paying interest on that amount of money. Uh, you know, that's, I don't think that's ever happened, Dennis. Yeah. Yes, I, that's what I'm saying. If there's people waiting, that sh that shouldn't be the case. So no, no. But I I do understand his concern on you know paying money for money that we're just sitting on you know. But if you know if it goes right out as soon as we get it, then you know we start accruing interest on the balance owed to us. So right. So, do you need a motion to yes, just authorize to request additional funds? Is what the motion should to be. request additional funds yes. for the um, sediment program. All right. So, I'll entertain okay. a motion. I will make that motion. And I'll second that motion, Kevin. And we'll go to roll call, Aline. Yes. And Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Um. Uh, Next up, we have the septic plans for 155 Brook Street, Grady Consulting. Hi, everyone. Rick Grady from Grady Consulting here. Hi, Rick. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you. 
Would you like me to share my screen? Excuse me? I can't see it because I called in, so. Oh, okay. I was just asking if you'd like me to share my screen. Uh, actually, we have uh, copies of the, the plans and such. I have it in front of me from the email, so I'm good. Okay. Very good. Um, this is an existing home at 155 Brook Street. Uh, interestingly, we designed their current system back in 1998. Um, the existing system is a 1500 gallon tank uh, and a series of leaching chambers. Uh, we're proposing a replacement leaching chamber system uh, adjacent to the existing system. We'd like to retain the 1500 gallon septic tank, install a new distribution box uh, and install a new uh, chamber system. We are requesting one local upgrade approval request for the depth of cover uh, over the leaching area. Um, the chambers are H20 loading. Uh, the depth is less than 72 inches. Uh, it's about a little over five feet, maybe closer to five and a half feet at the deepest point. Uh, and we are providing uh, venting as required uh, as well. Uh, we are able to maintain gravity. Um, we were asked to add the 200 foot riverfront area to the plan, which we've done. Uh, we're just outside of that 200 foot riverfront area. Uh, septic systems are exempt from uh, riverfront regulations anyway, so uh, we don't have to file for both the exemption and because we're over 200 feet away, uh, file with conservation that is. Uh, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Mr. Grady? This is Kevin. Um, the, the only comment I would say is just maybe uh, on the inspection ports and risers, if we could maybe just go a little oversized on them. If you weren't already planning on doing that, just where they're going to be, you know, a little deeper. Um, let's see. What do we have on there? Um, yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. You know, I don't know if there were going to be, you know, 24s. If, is 30 the next size up? Maybe they could. I'm just thinking just because uh, they're going to be that, that deep in the ground, if maybe we could just go a little, little bigger diameter on the risers, that's all. Yep, I'm looking at the uh, detail of the flow diffuser, and it looks like their access port is a one foot diameter cover. So that could be fitted with a slight, something slightly larger than that. Yeah, maybe even if you just went with a, a two foot, I guess, on that on the inspection port on the on the end chamber. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm just, you know, that's just the only comment I, I really have is just I'm thinking the next guy down the road, just where they're going to be deep in the ground. Yep, uh, the D box, we did propose a riser right up to um, within six inches of finished grade. So that'll be at yep. least the size as the distribution box itself. Right, yep. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, no, I, I, don't, uh, I don't have any other comments other than that. Any other questions for Mr. Brady? Nope. Or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I will make, make a motion. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. I'll make a motion that we accept the plan for 155 work. That's submitted. Do I have a second? We lose Kevin. <laughs> he I muted. Kevin, you muted I yourself. Can you hear me? Yep. No. I'll second that motion, yes. And we'll go to roll call, Ali. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you, sir. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Have a good evening. Uh, next up, to update the well regulations. There's a copy of the... Uh, Regulations for private wells. I'm the one. We had this put on the agenda here. Uh, you know, there's a growing concern of you know so many people, uh, you know, changing the wells as far as drinking water. And in town of Hanson, you can't have irrigation on your town drinking water. So a lot of people are redoing wells and stuff and trying to. Two private wells, there's so many of them out there. I think we've got like maybe three or four well permits coming in now. Uh, just reviewing this, I think maybe put this off for another few weeks. 
I'd like to review what the other towns are doing because it is becoming the private well for irrigation is becoming a growing concern because it is tapping into the groundwater of, our, of Iraq protection zone. So uh, we'll probably table this for a couple of weeks so I can gather more information on this. And also the testing. Uh, testing is required as far as irrigation well and drinking well, the same testing, you know, the chemical testing and bacteria and all that. So that's another thing other towns are addressing. So uh, I'd like to put this on hold for a couple of weeks so I can gather more information on this. Yeah, okay, when I maybe. looked at it, it only said drinking. It only said testing for drinking when I looked at ours, the regulations. It didn't say for irrigation. It said, it said wells. It didn't say wells. I even, I, no, I'm, it says drinking. Yeah. I, I looked at it. It says drinking wells. It doesn't say. I mean, you can look at it again, but I particularly today saw that it said drinking. Um, it didn't say irrigation. So I didn't know if that was something we wanted to change. Uh, well, that's, that. well, that's the thing we want to address, too, because uh, a lot of people, once they get an ir- irrigation well put in, uh, they'll turn, in to turn it into a drinking well. And I've been reading a lot of articles about this, uh, and towns are starting to tr- you know, say, hey, no, you can't do that, which you're not supposed to. But there's got to be a regulation in place for this. It would be probably a supplemental regulation or something, so. Okay, because, yeah, uh, I know people complained in the past about having to test their irrigation wells because they're not being used for drinking. Right. Um, okay. All right. I want to do I want to do more research on my... That was kind of before when we talked about the skill was... Yeah, that was kind of my point, too, where it's it's, it's important to, to locate all, all wells just because, like you said, there's really nothing that's stopping someone from... Um, using an irrig- you know, what was installed for once an irrigation well to at some point change and use that for a domestic well, um, right. you know, for, for a water supply. So I think it's important to locate all wells like we had talked about before. And that was kind of my definitely. reasoning behind it too. But yeah, definitely. I know there is a growing concern because the water rates in all the towns, you know, they're, they're, they're going up considerably, and you know, our town also, and especially we've gone to quarterly billing. So you know, getting a lot of calls of people wanting to do private wells. So like I say, research this a little bit more and, uh, you know, come up with something, see what other towns are doing also. Yep. All right, we'll address that in a couple of weeks. Uh, three weeks, actually. Um, do, do we have a report from you, Gil? Or? Uh, things, uh, yeah, things are getting better now. The COVID has slowed down, you know, trying to address things like the well regulations, you know, Trying to get involved in things like that and uh, upgrade different things that we have, uh, you know, tobacco regulations. Uh, uh, there's a new regulation coming out now. So, you know, getting out there, we have like, I think it's seven or eight, you know, six or seven, uh, you know, tobacco dispensaries in town of Hanson. So, getting out there, and making sure compliance and there's a new regulation that's coming out. So, uh, also, we have the real estate market, as everybody knows, it's, it's still going hot and heavy. Uh, there's a lot of repairs. Uh, there's a lot of uh, replacements. So that's that's also got us pretty busy. Uh, and the office is just it's, it's going like it was before. It's just the COVID stuff is dropping off. So it's given us an opportunity to catch up on a lot of other things. And, uh, you know, getting back to a, a norm for the Board of Health office. Uh, compliance, you know, getting out there, you know, more compliance. Uh, pests, there's a lot of uh, a lot of rodents in these different towns, uh, Hanson, uh, Whitman, uh, Rockland, and Abington. Uh, we're all experiencing a lot of increase in rodents. So uh, also, you know, going out, because you actually, with rodents, you have to find out where they're coming from, what they're doing, and although it's a homeowner problem, uh you somehow have to get out there and find out where they are coming from to make sure that, uh, you know, where they generated from, you take care of that. And as far as chickens and stuff, those type of homeowners have to take, you know, prevention of that. So, but we find the source of where they're coming from. So, and that's about it. Uh, rest of inspections are caught up. Uh, there's a few, um, you know, we have expressos dropped off. And some of these smaller ones in the retail areas are, the next time coming around, I'll be doing most of them myself, and you know, and making a, a better plan with Kathy, the individual independent inspector that we do use. So, 
but uh, I think things are going pretty good. But it's just you know, getting getting the office back to a norm that we should be at. So, and that's about it. You know, when you mentioned tobacco dispensaries, what what were you talking about? Vape vape products or? Uh, we don't have a vape shop anymore. It's all flavored tobacco. Uh, see, all these t- <clears throat> tobacco dispensaries, like Smoking Ashes, Shaw's, uh, Cranberry Mice, those places, they have to maintain letters of certification of what they're selling, the product okay. they're selling, and the contents of that product. Uh, the state hasn't even been doing that. They've really been dropping in on these places themselves. So I just got this thing from them uh um, oh, actually, Monday, yesterday, uh, the new law that's coming out as far as, you know, certification of the products they're selling. So we basically want the local health agents to get out there also and make sure the certification letters are in place at the, bis- at the business. So, Right. Okay. Any other questions for Gil? I had uh, two um, issues. One was, there was nothing posted around the 4th of July holiday in terms of when we were open and when we were closed. I didn't find anything on the town website. There was nothing on our Facebook page to let people know which day the holiday was. The town hall was closed on Monday. Um, so, and, for the tra- um, what is it? I'm sorry, I couldn't the, hear you. For the transfer station you're talking? Yeah, the transfer station. Nothing was publicized about when we're, they were going to be open and when they were going to be closed. The other thing that didn't happen is we didn't in any way notify people that the bags were going up July 1st. So, of course, they go to the transfer station and they complain because there was no notification anywhere. It wasn't on the town website. It wasn't put in the local newspaper. It wasn't on cable. It wasn't on Facebook. So they're taking the grief at the transfer station, and they didn't know about it. Because it wasn't publicized in any way. No, we did. We didn't publicize. I like guess you know, our fault in here that uh, it wasn't publicized. And uh, the the July Fourth holiday that was kind of an oversight because the way uh, it it worked, you know, their holiday was the Sunday, and uh, they worked the Monday. They were open on the Monday. Right. When are, the are, are we are we required to notify them? I mean, I I would think that's more of a courtesy. I mean, we've always I mean, done it in the past. They're paying yeah. for the service. They're paying for they're paying for a sticker. We should be able to tell them when we're open and closed, especially around a weird holiday like this was. Some people got the fourth. Some people got Monday. And there's no way yeah. for them to know. There was no way for me to know. It it would really just be a courtesy saying, okay, you're paying for this service, but it's not going to be available this day. So they can plan ahead. Um, right. Yeah, so I think it was just something that slipped through the that. cracks. Yeah, no, we can try to make sure we do that going forward. I think it was just something that slipped through the cracks, and uh, right, you know. Honestly, I didn't know which day they were going to be open and which day they were going to be closed. You know, and then when I tried to look it up, I couldn't tell. Yeah, <laughs> I actually called Chris, and Chris told me. Yeah. So, it was um, con- it was confusing. Was yeah, it was it was it was an oversight. No question about and, it. I am going to work on um, recycling education again. When I was at the transfer station today, um, somebody had just dumped a ton of stuff into the recycling, which included dead plants, a dead chipmunk, and a sundry other thing that absolutely do not belong there. So I think it's, it's not, it's a good idea to begin to remind people what should be going in there. I mean, because you have to stand, either you stand and watch every single person to make sure. It looked like it was yard waste, and they just dumped it in there. So I think it's worth putting out a little information on um, at the transfer station, on our website, our Facebook page, and on cable about the things that belong in there and the things that don't. Because if that goes down and ABC gets caught with all of that extra stuff in there, the charge comes back to us, and it's very expensive if it's, it's contaminated. Um, so, I mean, it's not their fault. Chris was working by himself, so we need to educate people to make sure that they're not putting stuff in there that does not belong, even though it should be a little bit of common sense. 
it, yeah, it's just, a little bit of common sense. Like, you it know, should be uh, We shut it down to one line today. I found out that uh, found out yesterday afternoon that John Gray is on jury. He's on jury duty, and then if right, I know that he's on. I know that. Uh, yeah, pick. and that wasn't the issue. The issue was yeah. people throwing stuff into that don't belong there, and then how do you get it out? Yeah. But then how do you not get caught at the other end with a contaminated load, which costs us a lot of money um, if they have to process it? Yeah, we, yeah. Didn't, bring, uh, we didn't bring Brian and uh, just the fact that, you know, being a Monday and Tuesday, it wouldn't be... And know. he couldn't work those extra hours um, most times anyway. Yeah, so... Yeah, that wasn't the problem. So that's, that's the two things that I... Um, we need to be better at letting people know when we're open and closed. And unfortunately, I don't think any additional signage up at the transfer station would make any difference. You know, um, it does so. If you go in there and you see the sign saying we're closed, on no, 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 no. I'm saying as far as recycling, I'm saying recycling. Oh, no, because no, at that, that point, no. it, you know, it's already been sorted and they're not going to sort it any differently. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. but this stuff clearly wasn't sorted because it was something they had just dumped in there. Yeah. Um, it, it, we need to remind people. Yeah. Or try to get them to follow the rules as best we can. That's all. I don't Thanks. think I have anything. Anyone, anyone else with anything? Any questions? Any answers? About it for me. If uh, I, I don't, I don't have any, I don't have anything further. Okay, if everyone's all set, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. This is Kevin. I'll second. And we'll go to roll call. Aline. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks. Right. Have a good day. Everybody, Bye -bye. Take care. Oh, see you later. Take care.